A couple quick notes about this procedure. Um, I needed potassium peroxide for an experiment I wanted to do, and so being lazy, I looked for some tutorial videos on how to make it um, instead of actually going through the steps and figuring out how to make how to make it myself. Well, it turns out that I couldn't find any videos on how to make it from scratch, effectively from potassium hydroxide, chlorine, and um, potassium iodide. So I decided to try to do it myself. Uh, I think it worked pretty well. The, the compound I got was behaved like potassium per iodate, so I have no reason to think that it didn't work. Um, and additionally, this process can has very easy, easy to get uh, starting components, and it can be used to make um, chlorates, perchlorates, um, bromates, uh, iodates, and periodates all uh, just by some simple substitution of the chemicals. Um, Perbromates are very hard to make, um, but um, yeah, so just note about that. Uh, you can substitute some chemicals and redo the stoichiometry and it'll work for making many, many different, um, or well, bromates, perbromates, um, and, or bromates, chlorates, perchlorates, iodates, and periodates. Anyway, let's get to the procedure. This procedure's yield depends on the difference in solubility between potassium chloride and the uh, potassium per iodate. So try to use as little water as possible. For my experiment, I used 80 milliliters of water, uh, 90 milliliters of water, knowing that some a couple milliliters of water get formed as part of the reaction. Uh, you can scale it up or down from there. Next, take 13 grams of potassium hydroxide and dissolve it in the water. Now weigh out 14 grams of calcium hypochlorite um, and put it in a separate beaker. Now I'm using, or rather, an, a flask, an Erlenmeyer flask. Now I'm using um, an Erlenmeyer flask with a, with a stopper that is a two-hole stopper. Um, and it, one, hole is large, one hole is connected to a tube, which will uh, be a tube for the chlorine gas that's generated. The other is a hole which I will use to pipette in hydrochloric acid dropwise. Now weigh out a little over 15 grams of hydrochloric acid um, and now take the original potassium hydroxide solution and pour it into the graduated cylinder. Um, you're doing this because that way the chlorine gas that's bubbled through has longer time to react. So uh, in the Erlenmeyer flask you'll see the reaction that's going on between the calcium hypochlorite and the hydrochloric acid to generate chlorine gas. Um, and then I'm going to be bubbling the chlorine gas through the potassium hydroxide solution and the following re reaction goes on there to generate potassium chlorate. Now you may notice, looking at the stoichiometries, that I have excess um, calcium hypochlorite and hydrochloric acid. And the reason for this is that a lot of the chlorine actually does not react and get, gets up as a gas as well, so you want excess um, uh, reactants that make chlorine. Now take the solution you got and pour it into a beaker. Now weigh out uh, uh, 8.66 grams of potassium iodide and add it to the solution. You'll see the solution is slightly yellowish at first because of dissolved chlorine, but it gets quite a bit redder. And then as you stir, it'll get lighter again. Well, lighter and darker uh, again. And I believe this is because of some elemental iodine in solution, which then immediately gets um, taken up again into iodate. So now you've created potassium iodate. Now weigh out 4.5 grams of potassium hydroxide. This is needed to turn the iodate into per iodate. So take the solution and add the potassium hydroxide to it and um, dissolve the potassium hydroxide. Now, when you dissolve the potassium hydroxide, that's going to force a lot of potassium chloride out of solution, and you're going to get a precipitate. So make sure you get all the potassium chloride into the tall uh, graduated cylinder. And um, when you bubble the chlorine, make sure the hose is at the very bottom of the cylinder so it, the chlorine touches 100% of the potassium chlorate. Now get 5.16 uh, grams of um, calcium hypochlorite, put it in the Erlenmeyer, and add about 5.6 grams of, um, or milliliters, it doesn't really matter, the density is about one, um, of 31% three, three uh, uh, hydrochloric acid. Um, and bubble the chlorine that's generated 
through the solution. Now it's, it, the solution starts out of pretty light color and it actually gets quite yellow, yellowish orange after a while. And you can see now uh, the solution is quite a bit more yellow. Um, potassium periodate solubility in zero de degree water is effectively zero. So you're going to have a very high yield and its solubility is about a thousand times less than that of potassium chloride, the other product that's in solution. So you should get, be getting pretty pure product. So I'm pouring out the, the slurry and just letting it settle. So here I am cooling it down in cold water and um, then I found that it's actually pretty stable to heating so I just heated it directly in a crucible to dry it out and um, I'm, I'm left with this really nice uh, powder of potassium periodate.